Brown trout have a way of making anglers lose their minds. There aren't many other fish on the planet that can cause such division among the anglers that chase them. The passion these fish seem to invoke in people is probably part of the reason they've been so successful, with brown trout living everywhere from Georgia to Maine and all the way out to the Rocky Mountains and the Sierras. These fabled fish are arguably not only the most popular trout in the U.S., but also the world. Oh guys, there's a new tree in this hole that wasn't here last time I was in this creek. So it'll be interesting to see how fish are using that. So I would assume they're using it pretty seriously. By the way, I have a olive sex dungeon on right now, so I'm gonna run with for a little bit. Water's really clear, but it's overcast. We just had a good amount of rain. So, I would think the browns would maybe be active. Also just based on the time of the year. Oh my God, I either got hit or I got stuck on a limb. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure which. Oh my God, huge fish, no! What? That was crazy. It's over. I mean, you hook a big fish like that, you're not gonna get a second chance at him. That was like 22 to 24 inch brown trout, male. I'm so annoyed with myself, man. I was sleeping. I thought the hole was over and the dang thing was sitting at the head of the hole in the run. Still come back for it. You gonna eat it? Yep, you are gonna eat it. <laughs> this fish missed it. Come here, buddy. This fish missed it once, came all the way back, followed it, and still ate it at the bank. Did you pop off already? Yeah, you did. That was cool, guys. I don't know how well you could see that or not. I could see it. I got shades on. I can see this stuff here. I'll just hold them up and let them go for you guys. Relax, buddy. He's not a giant, but I guess it'll start off the day kind of hails in comparison to that first fish that I lost. Good news is it looks like it might be a streamer day. <laughs> and you know how much I love streamer days. I literally live for streamer days. Okay, so let's not beat around the bush. This video was filmed on October 15th. And I know some of you are already hopping on your keyboard to leave a comment about how I shouldn't be fishing because of the spawn, which is exactly what I plan on talking about in this video. But before we get too far, let's go over a brief timeline of the brown trout spawn itself. The fish generally start pairing up anywhere between September and October as they push up the creeks or look for their favorite spawn and gravel. The spawn itself, or at least what most people consider the spawn, then starts and usually goes from November into December before a majority of the fish are done. Once the fish are done spawning, the eggs sit on the nests or reds for several months before they hatch. The fry then hatch and dodge predators for pretty much the rest of their lives. Now obviously this happens differently across the US with some fish spawning as early as October or as late as February in some tailwaters. But the general timeline you need to know is that the fish pair up, spawn, and leave eggs on reds throughout the winter months. In other words, the spawn is a long drawn out process. Alright guys, so I've just seen my first pair of brown trout. Let's go, which is actually a really cool, it's October 15th. It's not quite, they're not gonna spawn for another week or so maybe. But I came to this hole and I was like, this would be a great place for a trout to spawn. And I saw a pair of brown trout right here sitting underneath this log and they're moving around together. I'm not gonna fish at them, but it's cool to see that they're pairing up because that's what you wanna see. I mean, when these fish reproduce, it gives life to streams like this. And I guess that brings me to another point, which is spawn. As I said, this is kind of pre-spawn, but there are going to be some fish paired up. But fish don't all spawn at the same time. People, a lot of times, get their panties in a wad over trout spawn. Like, people will say, oh, you shouldn't fish during the spawn. And then those very same people will come out and fish in December. It's like, man, the same reds with the same eggs are still on there. In fact, there's more eggs, or more reds with eggs in December, because all of them are still sitting out than there are right now. So if you're one of those guys who say, ah, 
I won't fish for brown trout, brook trout from October through November, and then you go out and fish in December, and you're not paying attention to the reds, then you're just being ridiculous. I would just like to say that I'm in no way advocating for anyone to fish while the trout are spawning, and in some areas it's even illegal. However, I think that education is far more important than making blanket statements about what people should and should not do. And I find it hilarious with some of the hypocrisies that we as anglers tolerate and even spread without putting much thought into it. And one of them is what I just mentioned. People avoiding fishing in November only to fish December and January or whenever post-spawn is where you fish. When in reality, I could argue that running through the red post-spawn is not only more detrimental because they all theoretically should have eggs on them, but the reds are also more difficult to identify during this time of the year because of sedimentation and other factors. And not only that, but the brown trout this time of the year are skinny, worn out, and generally in bad shape after spawn. So if you're going to take the moral high ground and not fish for spawning brown trout, then you should probably take the winner off too. Oh! So, oh gosh, there's a red! There's a red! It's like I was just talking about it, and here we have a red. Okay, and I just spooked the fish, so they're clearly not locked onto it. I didn't see it. it sound like a big fish, but see this light piece of gravel right here? That's your red, boys. So when you see stuff like this, and this one's pretty obvious because it's probably pretty fresh. When you see stuff like this, do not touch it. Do not get anywhere near it. If you see fish on it, leave them the heck alone. And I would have loved to have seen the brown shot that was sitting on that because he made a heck of a splash when he took off. But that proves my point. I've hooked a big fish today. I've caught another one that wasn't too big. I saw one pair and now I've seen a red. So the fish are getting ready to spawn. Some of them might be getting close to it. They're not quite doing it yet. But like as long as you have the knowledge to kind of go through these streams and decipher what fish like, like I know that I'm not going to fish the tail end of a hole like that or riffles because that's where the fish are going to spawn. But then you come up to a hole like this and fish don't spawn in these holes or they're just not going to. There's one at the very back end spawning, but there's not going to be one here spawning. So you can come up to these holes, screw around and have a good chance at a big brown trout. That's annoyed that you threw your streamer in front of its face, which it's just fun fishing. As long as you know what you're doing, you're not screwing anything up too badly. Big old brown. I just saw a big old brown. I moved him. Not like super, like not any bigger than the things I've already seen today, but he moved at this stupid streamer. I can just dang near guarantee you that this fish will eat this nymph. Because he followed it like he wanted to eat it and then just didn't. And he wasn't spooked. So this will probably catch him. If I can get down in front of where he is, wherever that is. I'm not sure where that is exactly, but... We'll figure it out. Probably 20 inch fish ish, give or take. There it is. Oh my god, he's way better than I thought. That was him though. Oh, I don't like that. Don't do that, dude. It's almost like they've been hooked before or something. That's him. I found this little pocket. All right, let's see if we can relax this fish a little bit. All these fish have so much dang energy. Like, look at this. See if we can just side pressure him into a little bit of relaxation. Don't do that. Come back. If you want to come down here, we'll come down here. All right, this is a good place to land you. If you want to be landed, that is. We'll get tired here in a second. He, she, it might be a she. Come on over here, girl. 
Man, look at her go, dude. That's a tripled over rod right there. You ready yet? There you go. See? Is that too bad? She's better than I thought. She's definitely a 20. The next hilarious point I'm going to make is rainbow trout and how literally nobody cares. I mean, springtime is when the highest volume of anglers are on the water, which perfectly coincides with when the peak spawn is for rainbow trout, and even cutthroat trout if you live out west. Yet nobody says you can't fish in the spring, and not once have I read a comment about how I'm fishing during rainbow trout spawn. Also let's not forget that during the spring is also when a high majority of the bait fish spawn, such as suckers and chubs, which are the main forage for the brown trout. So you'd think if we loved brown trout so much we'd care a lot about their forage too, right? I mean, I know this is ridiculous, but I'm trying to make a point. There we go, there we go, there we go. That's a big one too. Little glass cast, and I finally hooked a big one. Knew there had to be a big one in there. It's a real nice fish. Come on, buddy. Don't come off. Oh, falling. It started raining, I was like, I need to switch to a streamer. Immediately good fish eats. Don't do that. That slack is dangerous. Smaller than I thought he was, honestly. He, she, whatever. This thing's still my biggest of the day, probably. Oh, he just popped. That is crazy. Came right out of the corner of the mouth. Oh well, it's a good sign. I was like, the stream, the fish, or the fish should be starting to bite now because the rain. Oh well. I thought it was like a 22 plus inch fish and it looked like it was only probably 20. Nothing happy about losing it, but uh, you'll have that on these big jobs anyways. I guess I'll try again. See if maybe a second one's right here now. That I've got confidence in that spot. Alright guys, so I don't know how well you can see this. This is another red. Again, very obvious ripple section. I was literally walking up here looking for reds. This one had no fish on it. Um, which kind of goes along with the pre-spawn behavior. A lot of times these fish will come up and they'll start making reds and they'll move up and down on and off uh, depending on how active they are when they really truly get locked onto reds and they start spawning I mean it's hard to get them off there like they won't leave the red they'll sit there you'll walk right up to them dang near um, they don't seem to be there yet in other words they're not actively spawning but they are hanging out in the general areas where I would expect spawning trout to be which is cool again it's good to see because you'd rather there be fish in here that are spawning and doing their thing. It would be more concerning if there wasn't a spawning fish. Oh my God, can you guys see that? What a fish. Got him. Don't come off, buddy. That fish is incredibly colored. Stay hooked. Stay hooked. Come on, get undone, get undone. He jumped in the net, baby. That's what we're talking about. That's a pre-spawn brown trout. I watched this fish come down and he tried to eat the nymph and missed it. And he came back and grabbed it. He's not huge, but the colors on him are incredible. He might be 20, but colors are what makes this fish special. Sheesh. Wow, that's incredible. Just to be clear, I don't fish when the trout are actively spawning, but I'm well aware of what impact I'm having when I fish pre and post spawn, and I do my best to make sure that impact is minimal. My issue is as soon as we start throwing around absolutes like you can't fish during spawn, you can easily go down a rabbit hole and end up not fishing at all. I mean, not all trout spawn at the same time, and although there is a peak at which a majority of the fish are spawning, there's always fish that aren't. 
I think there's a sweet spot between education, awareness, and ethics that will do far more for a fishery than yelling at everyone who fishes in October or November. Also, let's be honest. The biggest threat to trout today is not the anglers fishing during the spawn, but the myriad of environmental problems that are knocking out our streams one at a time. And if you guys want to hear some fly fishermen go into far more detail than I'm going to in this video, then check out the Trout Bitten Podcast who released a really good podcast on the subject a week or so ago. Begging. Begging. Come on, get the net off me before he pops. Oh, buddy, that's awesome. Tiny little creek. <sighs> Literally crawling up here on my hands and knees to catch a fish. Finally got one. Seen a few smaller fish, but nothing worth a crap. As I said, this isn't a giant trout, but I will take it without question. Would you chill out? He ate my little jig streamer. Swallowed that streamer, dude. Swallowed it. Perfect. Got a little bit of bird damage, but he's a gorgeous fish. Golly, look at that thing. Oh, another one. Got him. That's a rainbow trout, what? I'm stuck on myself, dude. There you go. That's crazy. What you doing up here, buddy? Ooh. That's cool. Just a little bow action. A little rainbow never hurt anybody. He's a pretty fish too. God, you're a pretty rainbow trout. Jeez. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm fishing underneath that fog there. Ooh. God, dude. God, dude. It's a great brown. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. I'll try to get him here if I can. Oh my gosh, that's so sick. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope you guys can see that. That's crazy, man. I got a limb too. That was 5X. Cortland's 5X tippet. That's what I'm using. And it just got tangled and held this brown on out of sheer force just a little pink jig streamer <clears throat> that's awesome it's a pretty fish look how dark this is a female such a dark female too that's awesome what it comes down to is that if you truly wanted to leave wild trout alone and let them spawn without interruption you wouldn't be fishing from october to may and then with water temperatures becoming an issue you really shouldn't fish a lot of rivers in july and august which leaves let me check June and September. This assumes that you have both wild rainbow trout and wild brown trout in your river system or some similar combination, but my point stays the same. I think us as anglers, especially fly anglers who practice catch and release, feel we have some sort of moral high ground while fishing and that we do no harm. But in reality, fishing, much like hunting, is an activity where we are inherently affecting the fish in a negative way. So I think we all need to take a deep breath, relax, and let people enjoy these fish. And if you love them so much that you feel the need to fish for them only two months out of the year, then more power to you. But as long as the people are following the laws and regulations, let them have fun and try to educate them rather than demean them. Because the more people we have enjoying fishing, the more people we have to protect the fish when the time comes. Thanks for watching.